guys, John Cortez here with CortezPerformance.com and CTSGym.com. Welcome to the Freak Speed Athlete video. Now you're here because you opted in for this free video and I'm just going to share with you some uh, really easy and simple steps to follow to help your athletes get faster whether you're a parent, coach, or athlete. Hope this can be some, some benefit for you, okay? So here we go. I want to break this down for you and um, this is going to make things a lot, lot clearer, okay? Um, we like to, you know, make things a lot more complicated than they really are, and this formula is going to help you just be like, whoa, this is, this is pretty cool, you know? I broke it down to make it very simple for everybody, and uh, this is one I follow myself with my own training, as well as training our athletes and clients here, and uh, it works every time. So without further ado, here we go, right? So we call this the Athlete's Freak Speed Formula. Now, why, why am I calling it that? Well, we got seven steps here, seven crucial factors that every athlete and client needs to, needs to know if you want to reach your goals faster than ever, okay? Uh, most of the time we're lacking in one or two, maybe more of these uh, at, at any given time. And we should be doing our best to make sure everything is up to par, all right? To be able to reach our goals faster, okay? And to just make everything fun, because if you're not fast, it's not fun, right? If you're not strong, it's not fun, right? And that's all relative, but everybody can, can get better than where they're at right now. So without any more rambling and and crap for me, let's get started, okay? Number one, the uh, the strength factor involved, okay? We, we gotta get strong, okay? We're, you know, again, we're not like trying to train, um, you know, power lifters per se, but we are using a lot of, of, of the same methods, and what we do with our athletes is, is we try to get them as strong as possible without sacrificing form, without sacrificing flexibility, mobility, without getting them hurt, obviously, but we do a lot of stuff, a lot of a lot of lifting here, and it sounds like well, no, no shit, right? But we got to get stronger, okay? And that doesn't mean going in the weight room, doing a bunch of curls, sitting on your butt, and doing leg extensions. Oh yeah, feel that burn? No, that's not what we're doing here, okay? We got to get strong through the basic lifts: the squat, the deadlift, the power clean, the bench press, the overhead press, okay? Those big five. Then we can get fancy with other stuff. Um, you know, we, we get a lot of body weight stuff with our younger athletes, so pull ups, push ups, dips, body weight squats, um, our female athletes as well. Most of the time, the younger athletes and the females, um, you know, 10 to 14 years old especially, they're, they're not very strong in relation to their own body weight. Um, can't do a single push up, can't do a squat, can't do a pull up. So we don't really necessarily need to do all the barbell stuff with them. Because strength work is strength work, whether you're, 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 you're trying to get your muscles stronger, okay? All we're doing is, in order to do that, is by adding either some sort of external resistance. Um, we got to make some sort of progression every week, okay? I went off on a huge rant right there. I'm sorry if I went off key. But again, getting stronger should be priority in your training, okay? If you're not doing any, any work in the weight room, you probably should start as soon as possible, and if you're not confident with your skills, you can come train with me, all right? <laughs> Number two, all right, mobility, all right? Mobility is different than flexibility, okay? I'll break it down real quick. Flexibility is being able to take a, you know, a muscle through like a, an active stretch, right? So you put, you go down for a hamstring stretch and hold it. That's flexibility, okay? Um, you you know you see dancers being able to touch their I can't even do that you touch your their foot to your head or something that's that's a flexible person okay um, I'm more concerned with mobility than flexibility because I think in my opinion you can you can develop flexibility quite easily enough flexibility okay we're not looking for hyper flexible athletes that can touch their head with their knee and do all sorts of crazy shit but we're looking for mo mobile athletes big difference okay what's a mobile athlete very simple. Mobility is the ability to get into a full range of motion without problems. Okay? So it's a passive stretch. So for example, um, very simply, if you, you think of a, a kid squatting, right? And they, they go down a squat and their heels come off the ground, chest takes forward, and their knees go in, and they can't even squat below parallel. That's a very immobile athlete, right? Now let's, let's say uh, a mobile athlete, you can sit down in a squat, chest up the whole time, your heels stay on the floor, your knees go out, that's some good mobility, okay? Um, if you're mobile enough to get in your proper positions, 
these lifts are going to become easier. You're going to get the benefits of the lifts uh, a lot more than an athlete that can't, that can't just, is not mobile enough, right? They're, they're too tight. And how does this happen? Um, a number of things. We're sitting all day, you know, hunched over at a desk. The upper back becomes really weak, right? Chest becomes tight. So then when that happens over time, over and over and over, we don't move, we don't stretch these muscles and strengthen the muscles of the back. You can't press the bar over your head all the way. You're like this. Pressing here, that's that's immobility, okay? This is mobility all the way up over the head, right? It, you know, it's it's basically we're looking at the joints, okay? We're trying to make make the joints as mobile as possible, okay? It's very, very fluid motion. Think of a mobile athlete, uh, Barry Sanders. Um, that's the one that just came up right at the top of my head. That guy was super mobile. And he was no wonder he was one of the greatest running backs to ever play. He just had insane skills, but also he was very fast, very strong, and very, very, very mobile. Okay? Mobility and strength will increase your performance. If you focus on just these two alone right now, guarantee your performance will go up. Okay? Number three. Power output. Now, again, we, we do want to get powerful, that's, that's true, but if these two are not in place, strength and mobility are in place, this is no good, okay? All the power in the world, all the jumping and the speed work and the sprints and the fast feet girls and all that, that's, that's good. We, we do do that as well. We have our athletes do that kind of stuff as well. But, you know, the younger, weak, weaker kids that really don't have any strength, you know, or I like to say horsepower. They don't have any horsepower in the engine. They're, they're too damn tight to get down all the way. They can't perform full range of motion lifts. We don't really do much power work. I mean, maybe a little, you know, a little bit, but once you got these two bases covered, then this will, will help you, okay? But if you're not strong, you're not mobile, power training you know, is very, very simple as well. Um, something as simple as a jump, a box jump, a, uh, a medicine ball throw for height or distance. Sprints is power work as well, doing basic speed work, skipping, jumping. It's very, very simple. Again, don't try to complicate this too much. Um, good way to tell if you're getting, if you're getting more power in your, in your training. Your power is increased if your jumps are up, right? If your box, or if you're, you know, we'll, we'll use a standing long jump, for example, okay? If your standing long jump goes up a foot in 12 weeks, obviously you got power, you got you're a powerful athlete. You got more power over those 12 weeks, okay? Um, medicine ball throw. If your medicine ball throw goes five yards further than it did two weeks ago, you've increased your power output, okay? Um, again, this is the type of stuff that we like to do in the warm ups, in the beginning of our workouts when you're fresh. This stuff should not be done when you're tired because, again, we're focusing on quality of movement, okay? Anytime you're looking at power or pure speed work, that should be done first in your training. So, um, it really doesn't make any sense to go out and, uh, and, and do a bunch of strength work followed up with a bunch of jumps or throws because they're going to suffer. All right? we, want that, we want your brain and nervous system and your muscles to remember that everything should be fast as possible and as far or you know you should be putting a lot of effort into that. Okay? So fresh as, this should be done first. Okay? You want to be fresh as possible, power work, strength. This is, you know, mobility can be done in the warm up. You know, something as simple as a dynamic warm up. Very, very simple. Okay? Number four, moving on, okay? Restoration. Now, this is, I think, this is probably the most neglected area of, of a training program. And it's really, really sad because more people are getting injured in their, you know, their, their sport or their, their training. And it doesn't have to be that way if you just focus a little bit more on your restoration, okay? Um, if you put the same effort into this as you did into this, you'd be a badass athlete, right? If you're doing this right now, great. That's, that's awesome. Good for you. But most people are not doing this enough of it. Including myself. Um, how do you how do you recover properly? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, simple as a, as foam rolling every day. If you're not foam rolling every day, start doing it. And if you don't know where to get one, look online, search foam roller. Uh, I recommend the the black um, axis foam rollers just because they're, they're a little more dense. The white rollers tend to tend to lose their form, um, but Definitely start rolling. If you don't know how, look on Google, YouTube. It's all there, okay? Um, again, you know, foam rolling, we're focusing on tissue quality. 